Hey everybody, we wanted to put together a video for our latest Dicota Teas season. It is our spring season and spring renews. <laughs> That's right. We were originally, as many of you probably remember, going to start this whole project in the spring of 2020. So we made these Dicota Teas all the way back in the winter of 2020, pre-pandemic, before we knew how much the world was going to change expecting to be wearing them and selling them in the spring and here we are actually getting to show them and wear them and sell them. Yeah, that's right. So we did a whole live stream of all of our clothes for the spring. We mm -hmm. talked a little bit about these. Uh, we also had the uh, promo video which we linked to about a month ago or so when we were talking about them for the first time. But now that we're ready to have them available for purchase, we thought we'd do a specific video to talk a little bit about the phrases as well as the cost structure, which is something we talk about each season. Right. So which one do you want to start first? Well, we're wearing both of them, as you can see. Yeah. So I guess let's talk about mine since I'm speaking and you asked me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mine says all we are is thought and maybe we'll put like a little photo of it too on the screen. I don't know sure. how well they can see it right now. I put my microphone off to the side so that people could see but um, it's in this sort of like lightning bolt shape and it's repeating all we are is thought, all we are is thought, all we are is thought. Um, well, it's not actually repeating all we are is thought, all we are is thought, all we are is thought. That's a good point. I have my glasses today. Uh, it says are, we are, all we are, is all we are, thought is all we are, is thought is all we are, are is thought is all we are, we are is thought is all we are, all we are is thought is all we are. And then it reverses, reverses. what I just did. That's true. Good point. Yes, it's even cooler than just repeating yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me of like the Flash, that lightning bolt, you know? But The superhero? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've always thought that for some reason. Oh, interesting. I never thought that until yeah. now. I still don't know if I think it, but I see it. I see what you're talking about on this bright yellow, too. Mm -hmm. But, um, And, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. All we are is thought. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it's so self-explanatory. That's the point, right? In terms of mine is saying, you are not your thoughts. So very similar wording, but different meanings as the Dicata T series is. That's right. And then it's up to the reader to decide what makes sense to them. Yeah. Well, and I think it's kind of interesting we picked these, like, which one I would have and which one Mike would have a year ago. And I still feel like this one resonates with me, but I also think through a year of walking, I've understood that one a bit more. Why does that one resonate with you more? I just, le I just feel like... Um, I like the individuality of it, mm -hmm. all we are, you know, like, because if all we are is thoughts, then that means that who I am is the thoughts that are in my head mm -hmm. and no one else can have those, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you are not your thoughts is more appealing to me <laughs> because that allows you to have some sort of moderation on what you're going to interact with the world with. And I think that that plays in with the fact that we stylize the you are not your thoughts after the parental advisory, which is itself a, a visual moderation. You know, you put it on the CDs and, and you're aware that it has content which you need to process. Right. And like either be old enough to know what it means and not be shocked by it or or something or yeah, be able to like skirt by it and not be bothered by it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the 
uh, this design is several years old, actually. We yeah. had it ready for some sort of major occasion, and I guess walking 260 marathons around New York City was such an occasion. Yeah, we had been start. We started the Dichotity project like five years ago, mm -hmm. but we didn't actually do anything with it. We were just making the designs yeah. and considering what it would be. And yeah, like Mike said, this was the. This seemed like a time that we could actually do it. And it's the second true Dichotities release, as we've done four seasons worth of releases, but only one other that did this, this specific altering of play on words, which is right. the community is endless versus a community of edges. Right. And I think. Uh... I mean, I think that one is also one where you can kind of get as deep as you want about it. But I, I feel like this one gives more of an opportunity to either think of it just surface level. But I think I, it's like obviously more emotional because you're dealing with the idea of thoughts, which can become something that's a little bit vulnerable to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. As opposed to like community, which you can kind of still keep just keep a distance. Mm -hmm. This like forces you in some way to think about yourself and your relationship to what it's talking about. Yeah, I think that's good. And so we have the cost structure as well, which is something we do every season mm -hmm. in order to break down the price of something so that you have a strong idea of why we're marking it what we're marking it as. Right. So for these, we are, we are of course wearing the pieces that we printed for ourselves to walk in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wearing it on a vintage crew neck that we found somewhere along our way when we were finding our clothing. And Mike's wearing it on a long sleeve t-shirt. But we plan to print these on a white t-shirt and a black t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And that will be what is available. Yeah. And I'm just going to read through the cost structure sheet as I have before. The cost of these t-shirts is going to be $55. Mm -hmm. And what goes into that? So a quick refresher for anyone that may have seen this but forgotten or anyone that hasn't. Um, there's two areas that you enter costs when you're making a price and one of them is a variable cost which is the cost that applies to every individual item so it's the shirt cost like the cost of the actual shirt you know the cost of the actual material that gets given away it's the cost of the actual labor that goes into it and then there is the fixed cost which is the cost that has to get divided out between each piece that's sold. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Okay, thanks. So <laughs> for our variable costs, that is the labor of printing, which takes about 10 minutes per shirt, and we, we pay ourselves for this $25 an hour. Uh, so that's $4.17. The labor of heat setting it, which takes about five to 10 minutes per shirt. I think I listed it as seven and a half ultimately at $3.13. The labor of delivery, which I have written here, part of our walking day is truly variable, but we're just doing free shipping because we're gonna be walking. It's part of our project right now. Mm -hmm. The setup of the screen, which takes about 10 minutes per print session, $4.17. The cleaning of the screen also takes about 10 minutes, $4.17. The materials, the ink is $7.43 for a small container, and you can get, I, I said it was 50 cents a shirt, so I guess you can get about 15 um, pulls out of each container. Mm -hmm. The t-shirts are from Royal Apparel, and that's the location that is based both in Long Island and Pennsylvania, and they don't have a union, but we were able to speak with people both through email and on the phone, and they sent over all of their labor 
practices. It was like a 60 page booklet about all of their labor practices in their factories and it's all made in the US. So we ended up feeling good about them. Yeah. And those t-shirts are $7.70. The shipping broken down uh, per shirt from them to us was a dollar and seventeen cents, and all of that together somehow actually adds up exactly to twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre. Um, cool. So our variable cost per shirt is twenty five dollars. Then we're going to look at our fixed costs real quick. Yep. And those fixed costs are. The screens, we had two screens burned at Gowanus Screen Printing Company uh, back last year, and that was $169 for those two screens. The squeegee, which is the thing that you use to pull the ink, $15.12. The tape that you have to put on the screens to make sure that it doesn't bleed through the edges is $13.07. It's specifically made for screen printing, so it's expensive tape. Um, <laughs> the design process to make these, which we said was 10 to 20 hours of design, I think we listed it ultimately at 15 hours, even though, as we said, it really was like four years. <laughs> so that could have been a lot higher, but we kept it sort of at like a reasonable area. Mm -hmm. And that's 375. And so the fixed cost total is 572 and 19 cents. And maybe you'll put a picture of this on the screen so yeah, people can I, see the map. I anticipated right? that was we were already looking at it. Perfect. Oh great. Okay. So you're all you've already been seeing it. <laughs> and um, as you can see or ha did see or whatever, uh, the, the, the formula for this to figure it all out, typically in the fashion industry, there are multiple prices for things. And there's the wholesale price and there's the retail price. And the wholesale price is typically found by multiplying the cost by 1.75. And that would just be the variable cost. That's not the including the fixed costs. So that would give us a wholesale price of $43.75 and a bunch of decimals. And then the whole, or sorry, and then the retail price is the wholesale price times 2.2. Right. And so that would be $96.26. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing is finding a number in between that, which we said was 55, and then plugging that into another formula, which is the break-even formula. It is the uh, fixed costs divided by the price minus the variable costs. So the price of 55 minus the variable cost would be $30. So it's uh, the fixed cost, which was 572 19 divided by $30, and that is 19.1 units. And what that means is that once we sell 19.1 shirts, we will have broken even. So that's not making a profit. Um, so once we sell 20 shirts, we'll have made a profit of 0.9 shirts. Yeah. So whatever that is, like $50 or something. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think it's we, I guess we talk about this every time, but I think it's really interesting to see or for, for people to start thinking about it from that perspective, from all like this whole, all the math that goes into it, all the true costs of things for especially smaller companies that maybe don't like 20 shirts is kind of a lot for some for people like us who don't aren't doing it wholesale, aren't going to. Um, markets and fairs and linked up with any sort of like showroom or anything like that. Right, but to make the actual cost reflective of those types of endeavors would, would drive it up even, even further. Totally. Because you have to reserve the space, you have to consider the transportation costs, you might have to consider any marketing for right. getting, you know. Right, and some of those things are like 
thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to get involved in. Yeah. So I think it does ultimately end up balancing a lot, even though people say, you know, like the more you sell, the cheaper it can be. But that's not always the case because a lot of times, yeah, you're, the more you sell, the more your costs are going up as well. But so, yeah, I think it's interesting to just think about, you know, truly if we wanted to make this really accurate, for what we probably would sell and to like give ourselves some sort of profit, they should be more like that retail cost of the 90, whatever it is, 96, 25. Yeah. But we also want to balance and make it fair. I don't fair is a stupid word for this because it's fair. It's always fair. If... <laughs> The person making it is charging a price. That's fair. That's what they need. That's what they decide they need. But I think that's, from our perspective, the $55 price point seemed reasonable and something that would be fairly accessible, but also not put us out too much. Yeah, absolutely. And we also, it's, it's all about making rational, reasoned out, decisions for what the cost is and where we're drawing the line on the costs, if that makes sense. Because, you know, we're doing this right now. Should this count? You know, this is part of marketing. Right. You know, we're going to be editing this video. Does this count? You right. know, what are we eating when we're making the shirts? Does that count as a thing? Yeah. Like there's... And I think that that kind of thing is really important, especially in fashion. I think this that kind of thing is discounted so often and because we're so used to being able to purchase things for cheaper that wearable things for cheaper that people are like oh uh no of course you don't count all that stuff but then you go to like a lawyer and they're charging you a million dollars an hour <laughs> because of all that shit you know they're counting excuse me they're counting all of that we're gonna take that out of the cost in <laughs> um and you don't really see it because no one asks for an itemized copy of like how a lawyer or some kind of executive makes their hourly rate. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, we could have included all of those details, too. And maybe in a future project we will. Yeah. But for now, this is what we've got. Yeah. So that's it for the cost. We'll say that due to the fact that we are wrapping up this project and the fact that we are getting married at the conclusion of this project, we the earliest that the printing will actually happen is post-project, so the last week in June. Great. So if you're ordering the shirts, expect to uh, hear from us on an updated time frame based on that. Right. Yeah. So in the past, we've done, I think, a like three or four week turnaround thing. So this one might be a little bit longer. Um, it would still be sometime during the summer. But as we get closer to the end of the project, like Mike said, and trying to wrap up a bunch of stuff, we don't want to commit to an earlier time frame than we can actually do without um, freaking out. Correct. <laughs> so yeah, you can go to the description below. We'll have a link to where you can purchase it. Our uh, why I always want to say Big, Big Cartel. Cartel. Yeah, it is. It just such a, <laughs> such a silly name. I feel preposterous saying it. It seems. Yeah. Like, I also like want to combine it with Cargo Collective for some reason. That is what I host my personal website right. on. Our Big Cartel page has these uh, shirts yeah. available for sale. Yeah. And I think that's, that's right. it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy the shirts. Leave some comments if uh, you do. Yeah, and especially about the um, the phrases, if you have any thoughts on that, I think part of when we were designing all of these, our idea was that we'd have events and we'd have communication and like yeah. in-person conversation about it. And I feel like we have a, we're having a little bit of a conversation, but like it's more fun with more people and more ideas yeah, which getting phrase, added. Which phrase do you like more? Which design do you like more? Does one phrase uh, scare you? Does one phrase uh, make you angry? Does one phrase uh, really resonate with you? We'd love to know because we would. that's why we make the shirts. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, bye. Bye.